So welcome back to another FIFA 20 video. Today we have another good video. We're going to be talking about the things that you should do in this game. Now, I've got some tips that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today on the things that you should do in FIFA 20. Hopefully, it does help you. And if you find any of this useful, make sure you leave a like on the video. Now, if you want to know all the latest FIFA 21 news when it comes around this year, make sure you subscribe today. This is the best spot to get it. At the moment, we have 78.2% of you guys watching the videos but not subscribed. So make sure you change that. Join the other side today. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world and it lets you access the internet as if you're in that country. This lets you access and unlock websites and content that you may not usually be able to see and it also adds an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all of your passwords, photos and videos safe. I'm sure many of you guys at the moment are stuck at home which means you need a lot of content to watch and this is the reason why you need Surfshark. It lets you change location and gives you access to a bunch of different Netflix libraries which means you never run out of content to watch. Take a look at this example, Spider-Man Homecoming is not available on the UK version of Netflix but if you switch Surfshark's location to Australia it will let you watch that movie and much much more. You can also use Surfshark to unblock content like on YouTube that is not available in your location normally. All you got to do is change your location and the video on YouTube is now unblocked. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices which is fantastic and they're also going to be offering you a great deal today if you use my code vapex you can get 83 percent off plus one extra month for free and surfshark does offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk at all to try it out for yourself the link is going to be in the description below now one of the most useful things you can do in a fifa game is skip the transitions you know i'm talking about all these things that you see on your screen right now now a lot of people where is the ball what happened to the match oh no what is he doing what I can't believe this is happening. What, what happened there? <laughs> anyway, carrying on with the thing. Uh, a lot of people press X to skip these transitions, but there is a secret time-saving control or something that you can press to actually skip all this stuff, and you save much more time. So I think it's L1 and R1, and pretty much here where there's a foul, instead of watching all this with the X button, you press L1, R1, and it goes straight into the game. And it's LB, RB on Xbox, but as you could see, we save so much time, and over the, the course of a match, this is all going to add up and it's going to save you a lot more time. Uh, let's try and create another scenario here where we just score an own goal. So obviously a lot of people as well, to skip celebrations, they press X. But if you press L1 and R1, bang, you're straight into the game again. I know a few people probably know about this, the ones that play online especially. But I didn't realize this was a thing until I was like playing squad battles one time and I accidentally pressed both bumpers at the same time and then it skipped the replay on the screen or something and then uh, yeah so you can skip this as well a lot of people press X and it doesn't go away straight away you gotta go through all these transitions to get back to kickoff but if you just press the L1 R1 button you skip all the nonsense you save probably 10 seconds every time and uh, bang you're back to playing the game so over the course of a match over a course of a gaming session in FIFA you're gonna be saving a lot of time by using the L1, R1 button every time a transition occurs, like a yellow card, if the ball goes out, a goal, you know, that kind of stuff. So make sure you do use it to skip all the crap. And speaking of skipping transitions, if you want to skip the warm-up cutscene in career mode, all you have to do is hold down the square button, and that's basically it. It goes away. So instead of wasting 15 seconds watching the scene, you can skip it and go straight into the match. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know about the EA catalog by now, but just in case you forgot about it, Make sure in Fever 20 you actually check it out because it's got some useful stuff. Now you can press the R3 button to bring up a few items here or you can go through the customize section and you click on the catalog and it brings up a better you know, presentation of the catalog. So you've got gameplay things that you can unlock with your credits and the more you play the game the more credits you get. Of course over the years it builds up and you get a lot of uh, credits. None of this stuff costs real world money, not yet anyway, <laughs> but you can unlock boots for players, balls as well, some of the latest balls get put into this uh, catalogue as well, and as you can see, you know, gold boots, anything you want, Adidas, Nike, Under Armour, uh, Pumas as well, you've got Champions League finale balls, Nike boots there, winter balls, so there's a lot of stuff there, and I think if you play seasons as well, there's different seasons perks you can get as well, like a seasons extra match or a draw, um, co-op stuff there by the looks of it. I don't really use this stuff, but uh, I think a few people could find it useful. Obviously, you have some crew mode stuff like the Scout Future Stars, uh, the Financial Takeovers as well. Now, my problem with this is that once you use it once, it disappears from the catalog. So I don't use it because I don't want it to disappear, but I guess I should use it. 
Of course, you should unlock the edit player in career mode. That will help you um, unlock the function where you can edit your players in a career mode save. So make sure you do get that one. If there's anything that you're going to get out of this video, get that one. Uh, there's a few training things as well. And then you can see your own stuff there as well. So it's got a few good things like the all-star teams as well. You can unlock those. Obviously, the classic kits did get removed from FIFA 18. But uh, the rest of the stuff still appears time after time. And EA does update it sometimes with boots and other perks that you need to get through the catalog. You can't just get them in normal FIFA 20 without the catalog. So make sure you check it out and see if you can unlock anything new. Now this one is also an important thing, but if you watch my career mode squad update videos each week, you'll know what to do by now. But for those people that don't, if you play career mode and you're about to start a new one, make sure you download the latest squads. Now there is a prompt on the career mode menu before you actually start one that says, would you like to use the latest squads? You can press the download latest button and it'll get started there. But if you want to do it in a more manually way, you can also go to the edit team section, go to the download updates, and then you'll see a prompt that says, are you sure you want to download the latest updates? You press yes, and then it'll begin the process of installing the latest players into the game, also the stats. And these squad updates are important because a lot of player stats change every week. So you want to start a new career mode with the latest stats, the latest players based on the real world. You don't want to be using stats from an old save or an old squad update. And uh, basically, this gives you the latest stuff. So every week, check in and out. Basically, just watch my um, squad update videos. I'll keep you notified if there's any new updates, but it's important to download the latest stuff every time you start a new save. Now, this is something you should do if you want to spice things up visually when you're playing a match in a stadium. If you go to normal kickoff mode, go to the game settings. I don't know if this works in career mode, but you can adjust the net visuals and the pitch visuals as well. Go to the visual section here. And you'll see that there is something about the net tension. So you can make it loose or tight. And the net shape, you can change it from rectangle to triangle. You can also change the mesh on the net from square to hexagon. And you can also change the pitch pattern and the pitch wear to heavy or light. So if you get bored of seeing the same thing, there is settings in the kickoff part of the game that lets you change the visuals. Now earlier we spoke about the EA catalog and how you can unlock boots. And you can also unlock career mode perks like edit players and all that kind of stuff. This is where we get to use these kinds of things. So in career mode, you can also do this outside of career mode, but I think more people do it in career mode. You can edit your players. So you have to unlock this for the EA catalog. I showed you that tile uh, earlier in the video. So let's say you're coaching, you know, the, the team I was coaching, the Mariners here. Let's say you get bored of seeing the same players with the same boots and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you guys might know you can change their boots and uh, you can also get some boots out of the catalog. Tucked in shirts, untucked shirts, you can change that as well. Uh, boots as well. This is where we can apply those gold boots we saw earlier. As you can see, nice look there. You can give him pumas. There's a, a whole range here that you can do for these guys. So it does take a while to go through every player, but I think it's worth it. You can also put gloves and ankle tape, hand tape as well, wrist tape, whatever you call it, bracelets as well, pink tape. I'm not showing you the right side. There you go. And then I think there's other things you can do as well. You can also change the socks of the player. And there's your ankle tape. So there's plenty of stuff to take a look at here. There's plenty of stuff that you can edit the player with. And I know it takes a lot of time. That's why a lot of people don't do it. But if you get bored of seeing the same players look the same in the game, there is options available to customize them a little bit. Another useful thing in FIFA 20 that you should do, if you're playing crew mode, make sure you change the name of the generic stadium. The game does let you do that. So let's say you're coaching a team like Barcelona. Obviously, the new camp is in PES exclusively, so they have a generic stadium. If you pick the team and you go over to the stadium setting, it's called El Libertador. Now, I think you press triangle, which lets you edit the stadium, and you can enter a new stadium name for this generic stadium. It's not going to bring back the license stadium, you know, but in the game, it's not going to say El Libertador. It's going to say new camp or whatever name you give it. So at least that helps with the realism side of things a little bit. Obviously, it's not going to be the fully licensed thing. Still hurts to see it at Pez exclusively, but at least you can change the name and that helps a little bit. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people don't think about before they play crew mode. Now, obviously, take realism out the window with this tip, but you can actually swap teams in crew mode. So let's say you wanted to put in a completely different team into the Premier League. Uh, you want to get rid of maybe Norwich or something. I don't know. I'm just picking a random team. You press the triangle button and you can put in a rest of the world team and do a crew mode with them or something in the Premier League. Or you can also go to any other league around the world. You can put Juventus in the Premier League, Barcelona in the Premier League, Real Madrid, any kind of uh, club that you can think of in the game. 
and then bang, even Inter can go in there. And if you pick them, you'll be Inter with the correct team and you'll be playing in the Premier League instead of actually playing in the Serie A and you can do a crew mode like that. That could be an idea. If you're bored of crew mode, you can try that out and just try something different. Now this one is also a useful tip for crew mode players. Make sure you use the team sheets tile to create multiple different lineups. If there's two or three formations that you want your squad to play in during a season, rather than changing the plays before the match and changing the formations like this, you can set different presets by going to the team sheets tile and then you can basically create a new team sheet and you can call it reserves or different formation or something. I usually have like a default lineup with the first team and then I create like a reserves lineup for those matches where you want to use the lesser overall players and rest the main guys. So you can create a secondary lineup here with your reserve players and you can give them game time and basically switch them out very, very quickly because you don't have to, you know, do this more than once. So I've done my secondary lineup. All you have to do to like use that team in the upcoming match is go to the tile and use the R stick and then you can pick that squad, whatever squad you want. So obviously I've changed the formation here, changed the players to reserve players. So very, very useful stuff. And of course it's a preset, which means it saves for the whole season. So you don't have to worry about, you know, wasting time doing lineups before every match. Now this one is also a good tip. If there's a change you wanna make in the upcoming match, like one single swap, like a center back or something, you wanna rest a player. If you do it for the team management section, any changes that you do here, actually saves permanently so you have to remember to come back after the match to put the player back where he belongs and uh, you know that's pretty inconvenient sometimes so there's a way to do it where it doesn't save permanently and you can still make the change for the upcoming match so go to the play match section and the best way to make changes for one-off things is to go to the team management here go to Hazard and maybe put uh, Mendy or something there and that'll save for the upcoming match but it won't save permanently, so you don't have to worry about going back into the team management after the match to put the player back into his position that you wanted to rest for the upcoming match. I hope it makes sense, but if you're going to make one-off substitutions before a match starts, this is the best way to do it without it saving permanently. So those were some of the things that you should do in FIFA 20. If you need something else to watch, make sure you click the card in the middle. It'll take you to another FIFA 20 video. I'll see you next time.